So welcome to video number one in this series of instructional videos on using R. In this video I'm assuming that you already have R Studio installed and R installed and you have some sense of how to navigate around in whatever operating system environment you have. So you need to have some rudimentary understanding here. Uh, inside the R Studio environment, the, I'll, we'll kind of learn about it, the actual interface here as we go, so I won't talk too much about it yet. But what I've done is I've gone to File, New File, and then R Script to, to open up a new script, and then I've saved it somewhere on my hard drive. Now, the name that I've saved it in is, is registered up here. It says R Tips. It's as good a name as I could come up with in, off the top of my head. And now I've got this open little con a window here in the top left corner by default when I open up R Studio. Um, and in the top left corner here is where we would write code, save it, to a, a destination somewhere on our computer that we could reuse. So in R, we often like to use, in any programming language or scripting language or any environment where you're writing computer instructions, it's often useful to have a comment, uh, to comment your code. And commenting basically just means providing some sort of information for you or anybody else that might be reading your code in the future that helps them understand what you're doing. So I'm just gonna start out by saying, some basic data types. So the first comment here is just saying what we're going to be working through, some issues around data types that you might use in R. And, and this isn't exhaustive. I'm not covering everything. I'm just covering a few concepts that I feel are probably most useful to a beginner. And that's where we're starting. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a vector. The vector is basically um, a data type that has that has a name or an identifier that can be used once we've created it. And in this way I've created it here is kind of very simple and rudimentary and not particularly useful in the real world, but it gives you a sense of what a vector is. So this vector or other languages might call it a, an array. It doesn't really matter what you call it specifically. The idea is that it's, it's a container of a sequence of numbers. It doesn't have to be numbers, a sequence of elements of data, in this case, a sequence of numbers. In order to run it um, and create this vector, I'm just going to put my cursor to the left of this little bit of code and press run here, and a couple things happen. I see the output of that running of that code down here in the console, the bottom left hand, and in the top right hand, I see, actually see the data object created. Now, to actually access the data in the vector, I can just print it out by, high, uh, by writing the actual name of the data object, like this, y. And you can see down the left-hand side, I see all the elements in the vector printed out. But I can also access specific elements in the vector. So if I go like this, I'm basically saying print out, print out the first three elements, element one through three in that vector. Okay. I can also create another data object from that process, right? So if I go like this, I'm creating another vector which contains only the first three elements of this y vector. So that's some simple, just some simple workings around a very simple data type. I don't have to just use numbers, of course. I can also type in other types of data objects like character. I can create a character vector or a vector made up of of, of words, so non-numeric data in this particular case. I have a vector of four names. To access the actual elements, it's the same idea here, but you notice, whoops, if I go like this, I can access the first element in that vector, of, in this case, of names. Now there are some data types. Uh, there's uh, something called a list in R. A list allows you to have uh, data types of different type inside a list item, but normally when you're creating a vector, all the data types have to be the same. So inside the vector, so what I can't do is combine um, characters and numbers, these different types of data, into the same, into a single vector. I'd have to use a different type of data. Now, if I want to put these two data types together, I can use a list. So I'll just do that right here. This list function will take these different data types and put them into a list data type. If we click up here, 
we can take a look at it and it says combine that's the name of the data object and it's a list it's got two list elements in it one of them is a series of numbers one of them is a series of characters so I can kind of lump it all together into one big data object and there's circumstances in which that might be useful matrices are these other types of data objects they're basically an expansion on the vector over more dimensions so the way we create it we create one way to create a matrix is just to specify values and then the number of rows and number of columns this creates a 5 by 5 matrix with values all values contained in that matrix are equal to 0 and if I run this code you'll see it to access date data in this matrix we use kind of the same idea as we did above except now, except now we have to deal with multiple dimensions so if I want to access the first element the first element in the um, in the an element in the first row and the first column so the top leftmost element I use the following code the fir in in this in R the convention here is its row column so the first number in these square brackets refers to the row the second number refers to the column if I don't specify one so let's say I go like this this is going to provide all the all the um, data in the first row sorry in column one so all the rows of column one are, are here and then if I go like this it will be all the columns in row one okay so this is the this is how we access data in in the matrix however let's say I want just for the sake of readability here what we'll do is we'll create random numbers here so 25 random numbers uh, numbers drawn from a random standard normal distribution put them into a matrix called M and again if we run this you can see all the elements and then typically especially if you're going to be analyzing data of different types that have different uh, details some factor variables some character variables some some numbers uh, I might want to turn this into a data frame a data frame is an, a very important uh, data type or data object it's not a data type it's a data object but but uh, it's very important in R and I find it it's important to know about it and it's useful and it's, it's um, especially for analytical work so uh, this is the code I put as data frame here so what this is doing is it's forcing this matrix into a data frame structure and if I highlight it and run it I can see the data frame created up here 